Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. In the previous video, we talked about working with arrays. Nice and simple. Go check out that video if you need the basics. But this video, we're going to be talking about how to work with arrays when it comes to passing them to functions, because there's a couple things you got to know. First though, you got to check out our sponsor. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. Now when it comes to defining an array, there's a lot of things you gotta keep in mind because they're not exactly the most intuitive thing to work with. For example, we talked about how it's statically sized. We sometimes don't have enough elements to fill all of the statically sized sizing, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And other things include we have to calculate the size using this weird size of operator calculation. And it's just a little bit clunky, but it gets even worse when we're dealing with functions. So we're going to create a function and I think by the end of this, we'll have a function that will print the array. But the main thing I'm concerned about is just parameters and arguments for right now. So let's just create the function. We'll just call it print array. And what is the return type going to be? Well, because this is doing something for us, it's not, oh, seriously, battery, why do you do this to me? So this function's going to print stuff, but it's not going to return anything. So we're going to make this function void. Now we need to talk about the parameters and we are going to take an integer array and what do we call it? Well, it's totally up to you. It doesn't have to be the same as the argument passed in. So we could just call it array and then we put the square brackets there. So let's compile, make sure we don't have any syntax errors. It seems to be good. Now, how exactly do we call this? Well, first thing, let's just comment all this stuff out. We might use that later, but I don't want it for right now. So. All we have to worry about is this guesses array right here. And I'm going to get rid of that size, so it's just size five. When we pass this to print array, it's going to look like this. Print array, and then we just pass guesses in there without the square brackets. Remember from last video I said, this itself is the array. You only use the square brackets when you want to access an individual element, or when you are defining the array like so. Here we have square brackets because we're defining an array called guesses. Here we do not have square brackets because we're not defining an array, we're just using this array we already defined. And we want to reference the entire array, so no square brackets. Now the first thing I wanted to show you guys is what size of will give us outside of the function and inside of the function. So let's do an output, and what are we going to output? We're just going to say size of guesses. If you remember from the previous video, this should be 20. And I need a semicolon right there. We run this, we get the value 20. Now let's copy this and paste this inside of the print array. We also need to change the name of the array to array because that is the variable right here. Now when you compile this, you're going to get a warning, which means we can still run it. It compiled okay, but it's just giving us a warning here saying that this is actually going to return the size of an int pointer instead of int array. So what that means is if we run this, the first time we get the value 20, and then the second time we get the value eight. So again, this is in bytes. So this is basically 64 bits. And that is the size of a pointer. And we haven't really talked about pointers and there's not a huge use for pointers when we're just talking about basic C++. C++ did us a huge favor and got rid of the common usage of pointers that was common in C. So most of the time we can get by without using pointers. But in this case, we are actually using a pointer, even if it doesn't look like we're using a pointer. And basically what's going on here is when we pass an array, guesses in this case, to a function, it decays to a pointer, to the first element in the array. What is a pointer? That's all it does. It just contains a memory address to some area of memory. The area of memory is the first element in the array. So if all that's a bunch of mumbo jumbo that doesn't really mean anything, basically what I'm saying here is that when you pass an array to a function, it loses its sense of how big it is. It no longer understands that information. So that means the size of operator is not very useful for us inside of this function. Now, if we created an array inside of this function, 
size of would understand the size in that scenario. It's only when you pass an array to a function, inside of that function it's no longer going to know its size when you declare it as a parameter such as so. So enough of this theory stuff, let's just talk about how to fix this problem. Well, the easiest way is to have another parameter size, and we're going to pass in the size to be used inside of this function. So we'll just get rid of this here, and instead of passing in guesses, we're actually going to pass in guesses and the value five, which is the number of elements. You can also calculate that size if you would like. If you want to do that, just use the size of operator. We can assign that to a variable size. And remember, you have to divide it by the size of one of these elements to get the appropriate number. So to do that, you can say size of, and you can pass in the first element, or you could even pass in an integer because we know this is an integer array. That's probably the best way to do that. Now when we compile and run, what happens is, well, actually in this case, nothing, but we don't have any warnings, <laughs> so that's good. Five gets passed to this array, and we can use that inside of here. So if we just output that, you can see that inside of the function, we have that value five. Cool. That allows us to work with the array as if we were in the main function, but we're actually inside of another function. So what we can do is we could take this for loop here, and we can take that and put it inside of our print array to iterate through that array. So I'm going to get rid of that line. Now we need to change this a little bit because we're not using number of elements. We are going to use size. So now let's compile. I have one error because I need to change the name of the array as well to array. Awesome. Now, haha, there we go. You can see we just printed that array. Maybe when we're done, we might want to do an, a new line. Beautiful. So that was a very long-winded explanation of how to use an array inside of a function. Fortunately, with some of the other collections, we don't have to pass in the size as a separate argument because it doesn't decay to a pointer.